Well, welcome back once again to another Jax Tech Corner and another Photoshop Elements 2022 video tutorial. Now today, I want to talk to you a little bit about the raw editing with Photoshop Elements 2022. So what is raw? First of all, raw is when you shoot photos or pictures with your camera and you have the settings set to RAW or raw image. So raw images, you're capturing the entire image and you're not compressing anything. When you use JPEG, if you shoot your photos in JPEG, the camera does a really good job, but it compresses the image and makes it a smaller file size. By doing its best guess and pressing all those colors and everything, all that clarity and everything together. But when we shoot camera raw, we can actually go into the raw editor and adjust all that stuff that the camera does, but we can do it to our likings. So this is the camera raw editor. And the way that comes up is very easily. Anytime you open up a raw image in Photoshop Elements, it will open up the raw editor first. Now here's a few things we can do to start off the bat. These are all the editing. So all of it is slides, okay? Then we can do cropping, so we can actually do uh, some cropping before we actually start even working on the image. We can do remove uh, red eye or red eye removal, which not a lot of people get red eye in these days because the cameras are so good and people are learning not to use flash all the time. We have more image settings, which is just apply previous setting. Okay, let's go back to our sliders up here at the top. The first thing we have at top here is the histogram. Okay, the histogram gives you a good indication of the color spikes and the overall image quality. If you have your spikes in the center, that means you have a pretty good exposure. If they're pushed to one side or the other, it will be either a very cool image or a very overexposed image. Okay, underexposed or overexposed. The next thing you can do here is you need to click auto, which it will give it an auto setting and you can see how that looks. Or we can do instantaneous black and white. Okay, so you could do either one of those. So if you click on auto, you can see that it will do its very best guess. It will move all the sliders and everything to what they, what uh, Adobe fills it is a very, very good image. Right? We can also do black and white, which as you see, changes the photo to black and white. All right, let's see here. Next. take off the black and white and we take off the auto there's auto we'll take off auto all right just click it one more time here's your profiles the profiles we have in here is adobe color adobe landscape adobe portrait standard vivid and again as you've seen monochrome so if you go to landscape and you have a look at that you see where it changes the histogram Okay, it lowers the colors down, so it's pulling everything down. It pulled the reds over to the left, and it changes the image as such. Now, you can look at the image side by side just by simply going down here at the bottom and toggling. So if we toggle this, okay, there's your current settings, and that's the standard settings we had. Cycles between before and after. There's a before and an after image. Okay, before and after. Okay, next thing we're going to look at is white balance. Now, white balance as shot is how it's coming out of the camera. But when you shoot in camera raw, it allows us to change the white balance just like you would on your camera settings. Here's a daylight. Again, we're looking at the after picture. Let's show you close this up. Okay, there's the after picture. There's cloudy. You can see before and after. Shade. I actually kind of like the before picture there. Tungsten lighting. Really made it cool, huh? Really cooled it down. Fluorescent. Or flash. Okay, let's go back to as shot. As shot, you can see both pictures are the same. 
Next is your temperature setting, and temperature we know is based on the temperature of the light. So if you go really cool to the left, you can see how cool it gets. It gets blue. If we go to the right, it will get really, really, as we say, warm or hot, okay? Because the light's getting hotter. Anytime we double click these, it will put it back to the setting where it was. We have the tint setting where we can change the tint of the overall picture. And you can just work with the tint. Again, double click it, we'll put it back. The exposure setting, again, we can underexpose it. We can overexpose it. Blow out the sky if you want. Blow out the water, right? Blow out the whole picture. The contrast, video contrast or picture contrast. So you can make it more contrasty. But look how it brings out the color of the water in the sky. So contrast is a very nice setting to pull that vividness out of your picture. Highlights will work on only the highlighted areas of the picture, whatever it sees as highlights. It doesn't work on the darks, okay? Shadows is just the opposite of highlights. We're picking up the shadows, and we can raise the shadows or lower the shadows. All right? Raise or lower. All right. Double-click that. Put that back. The whites is operating just on the whites of the picture. If you look here on the anywhere where you get the white part of it, there's the before on the top and the after on the bottom. I kind of like this view because I can see what's going on here. Or we can lower the whites down. So again, shooting camera raw, especially if you're shooting portraits, it's huge. I would never shoot a wedding and not shoot it in camera raw. Yes, you're going to use up a couple more memory cards, but it's worth it in the end. And honestly, when I shoot a wedding, I actually like to set the camera up as shooting. If your camera will do it, to shoot RAW and JPEG at the same time. Then you always have two pictures of the exact same shot when you're hitting that shutter. Okay, whites we looked at. Let's look at blacks. We can pull up the blacks anywhere the black is. Look, you can lower it all down. Pull it up. Clarity. Now, clarity gives you, you got to watch with clarity because it can make the picture look really, um, I like to say, un, not, not real. It makes it look kind of like it's been edited. But you can see, look how the ripples in the water came out because we got that clarity turned up to 87. We can also smooth the water out just by going down a little bit. Go down to negative 79. You can see it smooths everything out down there. Okay. Vibrance, again, we're going to pull the vibrance of the colors up. And yeah, we'll put it back down. Okay. Vibrance of the colors. Saturation. We can pull the saturation all the way up. And we can pull it back down. So if you pull the saturation down, you're essentially doing a, a black and white. Okay, you're taking all the color out. Now, if you're watching your histogram up here, it really helps when you're moving these, these sliders around because look how we can get it underexposed or uh, oversaturated. See, we can get these perfect colors lined up right in here. And get a perfect blend of colors right about there. Now, detail. Let's look at some of the detail in here. So, details would be sharpening, noise reduction, and color noise reduction. So sharpening an image is just that. And I had somebody say on one of my last raw, uh, ones I did on raw editing, I didn't show you the sharpening. Sharpening will sharpen the image. The best way to look at your image sharpening is by increasing the size, the overall size of the picture. So if we increase the size of one area, we're going to pull this up a little bit, I think. Let's pull this up, maybe. To 200. Eh, that, might be, that might be too big. Let's go back to uh, 100. But the sharpening will, will give you the sharp details of objects in your photos. And if you watch those really closely, you'll see the sharpening coming up and down. And again, you can get a photograph too over-sharpened. But what you're sharpening is the, is the edges. You're sharpening some of the color out. So 
I would be very careful with sharpening. I need to go back down here to 25. Um, but it is there for you to use, and you can do some sharpening with it. When If you click the pull-down menu next to sharpening here, you can work on the sharpening itself, the radius, the detail, and the masking. So the radius is how much of the object is getting sharpened. Let's go all the way up. Let's see if we can make see a change in this. And sharpening is such a fine setting. Okay, so we drop the radius back down. Detail. Pull the detail up here with the sharpening. So remember, these sliders work together. If you're not getting the effect you want with just sharpening, work with your radius, your detail, and then your masking. You can also work with your masking of the area. I hope that helps you out a little bit there. Okay, let's close that up. Noise reduction. Noise reduction is, it tries to smooth out the area, and I think I've seen it when I blew this way up. Let me see if I can blow this up again. Yeah. So if you see this graininess in your photograph, sometimes this happens when you're shooting at nighttime or if you're shooting at a very, very high ISO setting. So if you're shooting at a very high ISO setting, you're going to get this kind of uh, grainy looking picture. That is noise. You hear a picture, somebody said that picture is very noisy. It, it's not saying anything, it's just that's grainy. So you can use noise reduction and you can actually pull that out. Look how smooth that is getting now. See the detail, but you have to blow it up to see it. But now you can see, hopefully it's coming across on the video, okay, where it takes that graininess out is what you're looking for. Color noise reduction is the same thing. It's working more with the, with the color detail. And you can pull that out and smooth your colors down. There you go. Now if we blow this, put this picture back out to 25, there we go. So the detail of the picture is a lot sharper because we can't see the graininess when it's here because it's such a long shot. But when we blow it up, we can see that I must have taken this. Obviously, there's lights on I can see in here. Uh, so it was a little uh, dim outside. I probably cranked the ISO up uh, to get the shot to make it look, you know, more uh, visual, visual pleasing is probably what I did. And uh, that's how it comes out. Sometimes you get that graininess, but remember the graininess is noise in your photograph. Calibration, uh, I don't even know if we're saying, there's calibrations in here. The current version of, of uh, process is five. You can change it to an older version. That's all this does. Uh, I would not, I would leave it at five. I don't mess with calibration at all. All right. The hand tool, again, just moves the photo around, moves it this way or that way. Okay, this way or that way. Starring down here says, hey, I really love this picture. I'm going to give it five stars. That's going to rate it when it goes in the elements. And when you have it in your organizer, it's going to give it a rating. Obviously, you can trash it here. You can click it, and you can toggle it uh, for deletion. The depth, you see we have eight channel bits. We can also go to 16 channel, and that's just the, the bits of the color, the detail of the color. You see me messing around over here on the left. Uh, you can see where it says fit. You can blow your picture up at any time. You know, sometimes when I'm editing, I like to blow it up to maybe 300 or maybe even 100 at least. So you can see what's going on and get some greater detail when you're editing your photos in Camera Raw. Okay, then when you want to see the whole picture, put it back down to about 25. I think originally it was set on 12 when I opened the photo like that. So um, you can also hold your Alt key down and roll your mouse. If you have a, a, a scroll wheel in the middle of your mouse, you can hold your Alt key down and move it backwards and forwards, and you can blow this picture up somewhat. Okay, you can do it that way too. So, totally up to you. A lot of ways to do things in Photoshop Elements. That's why I really, really like it. Once you get the photo the way you want it, all we do is we would click on um, that point. If you click on Open, And when you click on open, it will open it in your Photoshop Elements editor and it will allow you to begin doing edits. Like we want to go in expert mode. Uh, we want to open up our layers. And then we want to start doing some more work here in Photoshop Elements. By all means, you can do that. So 
I hope this helped you with Photoshop Elements 2022 Raw Editor. If you have any questions, by all means, drop them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you uh, or suggestions for new topics or new videos. It'd be great to hear from you. I'm going to be going through a lot of Photoshop Elements 2022. So if you're not subscribed, as they always say, please click that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything. And uh, thank you for watching. Until next time, keep those shutters clicking, keep those editors editing, and I'll see you back here very soon on another Jack's Tech Corner. Thanks, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye for now.